CCDA Documents, Building Blocks for Meaningful Exchange, an educational presentation brought to you by the HIMSS Health Story Project. This educational resource is designed for a non-technical audience interested in gaining a deeper understanding of the HL7 clinical document standard and the types of CDA documents defined in the HL7 Consolidated CDA Release 2.1 Implementation Guide. We will provide an overview of the CDA and CCDA standards, discuss the different types of documents defined in Consolidated CDA, compare two different ways of thinking about Consolidated CDA documents, the current way, which focuses on the sections of content that are required or optional, and a new way that focuses on the storytelling power of Consolidated CDA documents. And finally, we'll take a big leap and discuss how CDA Document Exchange supports information flow within the broader health IT ecosystem to expand the understanding of the possibilities for meaningful information exchange through the use of CDA. My name is Lisa Nelson. I'm an independent consultant who specializes in the use and evolution of the CDA standard. I'll be your guide through this presentation. The presentation you're about to hear makes understanding CDA and consolidated CDA very straightforward. You will learn the key information you need to form a basic foundation of knowledge about the HL7 CDA standard and the consolidated CDA implementation guide. We're going to start by talking about the HL7 clinical document architecture standard. When people use the term CDA, they are referring to this very broad, flexible, base standard. It was developed to address a wide range of data exchange use cases for all different sorts of clinical documents. The HL7 Clinical Document Architecture Standard supports six core principles, and these principles are very important to understand. Persistence. Each clinical document continues to exist in an unaltered state. Business rules determine for how long, but what's key is that the document itself must be accessible in an unaltered state. Stewardship. Each clinical document is maintained by the organization entrusted with the responsibility of being the custodian for the document. Potential for authentication. The assemblage of information in a clinical document has the potential to be legally authenticated. That is to say, it may not have been legally authenticated, but it must have the potential to be legally authenticated should that be required. Context. Each CDA document establishes the context for the information contained within it. Wholeness. Authentication of a clinical document applies to the whole and does not apply to just portions of the document separate from the full context of the document. Human readability. Each clinical document is a human readable document. It may have machine readable information in it too, but first and foremost, the information in a CDA document is human readable. All CDA documents have a similarly structured header that prescribes what information can and needs to be populated. The diagram you see in this slide shows the CDA RMEM diagram that shows the portion of the CDA standard that's devoted to describing the header. Many aspects of the header are optional but every CDA document contains information about the subject of the document, the authors, and the custodian. The header may include information about the encompassing encounter, service events that were performed, orders that were fulfilled, and consents that apply. Information in the header establishes the context for the information in the body of the document. If the information in one document 
replaces or appends to information in another document, the header includes a pointer to that related document or document. Finally, the body of a CC, uh, the body of a CDA document contains structured XML data or encoded data in a non-XML body, which can be rendered digitally but does not support computer processing in the same way that the structured XML data does. When the document has a coded body, a computer can process each individual section of information in the document. Further, the sections of the document may include individual structured entries that make it possible for a computer to process the information in each section. But don't forget, first and foremost, the information contained in each section of the document is human readable. Consolidated CDA is an HL7 implementation guide that explains how to use the base CDA standard to produce 12 different types of clinical documents. The CDA standard is very broad to support all different types of clinical documents. Tighter constraints needed to be defined so that implementers would know how to use CDA to make a specific type of document for interchange, like a discharge summary or procedure note. The document template definitions in Consolidated CDA are made up of other templates that constrain sections, entries, and other smaller parts of the CDA base standard. It's a nesting design that supports the core principle of context. This slide shows all 12 of the document types included in Consolidated CDA Release 2.1. Three of the document templates are new for the industry. They were defined when Consolidated CDA Release 2.0 was first created. The other document templates have been defined since Consolidated CDA Release 1.0 was first defined. Implementation guidance for many of the document templates dates back to work done several years ago by a group of vendors interested in leveraging the power of CDA for interoperability and information exchange. That group became what we know today as the Health Story Project. Consolidated CDA got its name because it was created as a harmonized set of CDA templates consolidated from prior work that had been developed in the IHE, HL7, and HITSB. The harmonized templates were aggregated into a single guide for greater standardization within the industry. The 12 document templates share a fairly similar header, though some of the document types have an encounter, focused context, and others do not. One document defines an unstructured document, which is to say it uses the non-XML body option. The other documents have structured bodies, but the section content differs from one document type to another. Some of the sections additionally have machine-readable entries defined, making it possible to encode the human-readable information in each section using a more machine-friendly format. Many of the 70 different section templates defined in Consolidated CDA are used across more than one of the 12 document types. This makes the information shared through the CCDA documents more meaningful and interchangeable. For example, the problem section is used in almost all of the document templates. That means if a person had a new condition on his or her problem list when discharged from a hospital, the problem expressed in the CCDA discharge summary document is fully interoperable with the problem information aggregated into a continuity of 
document used to summarize that person, person's health and care over time. I'll close this portion of the presentation by checking to see if you can summarize the difference between CDA and CCDA, and to see if you can explain the difference between CCDA and CCD. If you said that CDA is the broad-based HL7 standard called Clinical Document Architecture, while CCDA is an HL7 implementation guide that defines different types of CDA documents intended to support different use cases, you were right. You've been listening. Good for you. If you said CCDA is an implementation guide that defines 12 different document types, while CCD is one of those document types called the continuity of care document, then you get a gold star. Feeling confident this isn't too hard to understand? Good. Are you ready to learn more about the different document types defined in Consolidated CDA?